I'm Eric Lenhart. I'm the director of the Vehicle Research Institute here in the Engineering Technology Building on Western Washington University's campus. We are currently working on biomethane. And the idea of biomethane is that we can take uh, waste from animals, dairy cows in particular. And in Whatcom County, we're among the top 1% of all counties in the nation with regard to dairy cow population. This uh, 60,000, 80,000 cows are capable of producing somewhere between 9 and 20 million gasoline gallons of equivalent energy per year. Right now, the dairy cows, uh, their waste causes an environmental burden for dairy farmers. And it's one that the Department of Ecology, both locally in the state and the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency on a federal level, are trying to work on. The methane, as we currently deal with the waste, produces 23 times on a mass basis the global warming potential. So it's a tremendous greenhouse gas emission in our region. It also produces uh, fecal coliform and other kinds of algae blooms in the water supplies. So all of those kind of environmental issues are things that by using this as a fuel could make the economics of cleaning up the farms more desirable for farmers. What the farmers need to do is install anaerobic digesters to digest this waste. But the challenge is the capital cost of the anaerobic digester. And right now what we're doing in this county is we have one anaerobic digester and it's producing gas. It's a raw biogas. It has methane in it, has hydrogen sulfide, carbon dioxide. It's burned in a V12 that's been diesel engine that's been converted to run on the gas. This one farm, the Vanderhoek Dairy, it produces enough gas to have the equivalent of around 200,000 gasoline gallons equivalent per year. Dairy cows do their business in one spot. Their waste is scraped into a sump. It's pumped into a holding facility. It can be pumped directly into the anaerobic digester and then it can be processed. You can run the gas through a refinery unit, compress it so it's at a high density and then put it into your cars. So it can all be done on the farm. What's different about our research institute is that we tie in the advanced vehicle, an advanced parallel hybrid vehicle with the biomethane and the biofuels research. Our Viking 32 vehicle, our blue car, uh, it gets 50 miles per gallon. The yellow car behind me, it's designed to get 100 miles per gallon. These kind of highly fuel efficient cars are what's needed when you start going to biofuels. Nobody else has done that. We're the first school to run the cars on biomethane on a hybrid vehicle. Our research facility, with the use of undergraduate students, with the way that we've been able to leverage funding from private and public facilities, has been able to have a research impact far greater than the amount of dollars that have actually been in the facility. There's a multiplier effect with Western, with these undergraduate students, that it's much greater than what you can find at other pure research institutions and, frankly, at pure research organizations, at corporations. So we're roughly one-tenth the cost. It's a pretty impressive track record that we've been able to do right here at, at Western Washington University. I'm Stephen Fleischman. I'm an assistant professor here at Western Washington University. I'm with the Engineering Technology Department, and we are here at the Vehicle Research Institute. This bus is actually a 100% electric powered bus. It was donated to us by Kitsap Transit uh, to help in research and benchmarking for our hybrid bus design and development project that we're working on. We're using this as a benchmark, um, partly of things to study what they did right, some of the things that maybe we can improve upon. Our target is to develop and design a paratransit hybrid bus. It's powered by both internal combustion and electric power. It gives us a, a lot longer cruising range. Uh, we're also looking at much lighter construction, um, and looking at really developing improvements in passenger and driver uh, ergonomics and comfort, uh, vehicle aerodynamics. If we use the current bus behind me as a benchmark, we're looking at about 100% um, fuel efficiency improvement. Uh, we're also looking at moving away from conventional materials. And we're really hoping to get uh, some startup uh, industry here to maybe start building some of these alternative uh, fueled vehicles right here in Washington State. Mm -hmm.